For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Next up is electron affinity, so we'll start off with the definition. Electron affinity is the energy change, often in kilojoules, associated, associated with the addition of one mole of electrons to one mole of gaseous atoms or ions. Okay, so here we have a neutral atom to start off with. Neutral atom, right? Neutral gaseous atom, right? It's in the gas form. And it's kind of the opposite of ionization energy. We're adding an electron here to get an anion, right? We're getting an anion here. And so there's an energy change associated with that. And that energy change is the electron affinity. Okay. In this case, it's the first electron affinity because we're adding one electron. Okay. Now, the electron affinity can actually be negative or positive, which is why I put here in the definition is that it's the energy associated. It's the energy associated with the addition of a one mole of electrons, right? Because it's not necessarily required. Positive would mean required, but negative would indicate that energy was released, okay? So here, this is unlike ionization energy, which is always positive, okay? Because with ionization energy, energy is always required to remove an electron. Now, with electron affinity, in most cases, the first electron affinity is negative, okay? Why? That means energy is released when an electron is added to an atom. Why would that be? Well, electrons are attracted to the atom's positively charged nucleus. So it's somewhat favorable when, a, when an electron comes into towards a positive, positive charge. Okay. Now, um, that's for most cases. Now there are obviously important exceptions. Uh, one really, really important exception, uh, is the entire, the entire eighth group, right? The eight, a group, the noble gases, right? Because they don't want to get an electron. They don't want to lose an electron. They're stable, right? They're stable with their completely filled orbitals. Okay. Further, furthermore, the electron affinity number two is positive, And that's always the case, which means that it's, it always requires energy to add a second electron. Now, why would that be? Well, because the 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 product of the electron affinity reaction is an anion, right? So you're going to be adding an electron, a negatively charged species, to a negative ion, and those things will repel, right? We see that here. The electron affinity two would have would start with that um, negatively charged ion. We'd add an electron. We'd have an ion that has a negative two charge. Okay, so that would require energy, and in the in a, in a way similar to ionization energies, each successive or successive electron affinities are always more positive, okay? Because if you want to add, keep adding electrons to these more and more negatively charged species, more energy will be required, okay? So let's get into the trend. What's going on with the trend? Well, with electron affinity across the periodic table or on the periodic table, it increases up and to the right in the same way that ionization energy does. Okay, so I'll show that here. Increases up and to the right. Now, of course, we have to make sure that we're excluding the noble gases, right? We gotta exclude this group. Excluding noble gases. Right, because they're not trying to gain electrons at all. Okay, but before we go on, when we think about lowest and highest, what I mean, we should frame our thinking of electron affinity a certain way. And 
and we have to answer the question, what is a high electron affinity? What is a high electron affinity? What is a low electron affinity? What does that even mean? Right? The reason why I ask is because electron affinity can be negative or positive, right? The energy change associated with it can be negative or positive. So which direction more negative or more positive indicates a higher affinity? It's a really important question. Right? Because with ionization energy, all the values were positive. So the more positive it was, the higher it was. That was pretty intuitive. right? But with electron affinity, it's not as intuitive because you can have negative or positive values as far as the energy associated with the reaction. Uh, so you have to establish a sort of um, a convention, right? Or at least not establishing a convention, but at least understand what these values mean. Well, if you think about the word affinity, affinity pretty much means attraction okay so if something has a high electron affinity or a higher affinity for something then it's more attracted whoops why am i scribbling it's more attractive so if an element has a high electron affinity it's attracted to electrons it wants to gain that electron okay gaining an electron would be favorable Okay. And as far as favorable energy changes go, a favorable energy change is a negative energy change, losing energy. It's not favorable for something to require energy, right? I mean, you can just think about that. I'm lazy. I don't want to do things that requires energy. That's not favorable. <laughs> I want to be lazy and get by with as little as possible, right? Lose, losing energy um, or releasing energy is favorable. Okay, so think about this number line that I have here. As we go to the right, we have more positive values. And as we go to the left, more negative values. Hopefully at this point in, in your life, while studying chemistry, you are familiar with a number line. <laughs> um, anyway, to the right here, we have more positive electron affinities, which means that more energy is required right, to add that electron. This is less favorable, right? And this would be a lower electron affinity okay whereas to the left that's a release in energy a more negative electron affinity that means that there's more energy released right this is more favorable so in this this is in this situation um adding an electron it more readily occurs so the electron has a higher the the atom has a higher affinity for the electrons so we have a higher electron affinity. So the simple, the short way to remember it is simply that the more negative the electron affinity, the higher it is, right? So values to this, to this uh, side, right? Whereas more positive electron affinities are considered lower electron affinities, because that's that's an indicator that the atom really doesn't want to have that other uh, that electron added to it. So let's explain this trend. If we go down a group, what happens to atomic size, right? As you go down a group, atomic size increases, right? So the electrons are further away from the positively charged nucleus, right? So if the, the well, the electron that's coming in is further away from the positively charged nucleus. So the electron is not as attracted to the nucleus as it could possibly be because it's further away. So that's a lower electron affinity, okay? Across a period, however, the effective nuclear charge increases and the electron that's coming in is probably, um, is, is gonna be more attracted to that higher effective positive charge, right? Thus, we will have an increase in electron affinity. Now, again, an important thing to keep in mind, important reminder is that this is a trend, right? This is a trend increasing up and to the right. There are many exceptions with electron affinity, um, more so than with atomic size and ionization energy. So just keep that in mind. All right. So here's some examples of two exceptions. The first one I'm gonna cover really, really briefly. And that's the one with, with neon. So here we can see that neon is a noble gas. And so the value is actually shown in parentheses here. 
um, but you'll see that it's a positive value, right? More positive is a lower electron affinity, right? We just said that. So neon has a a um, a lower electron affinity because it's stable in a noble gas configuration, right? Um, it is a noble gas, um, and it does not want to gain another electron. So it would require energy to add an electron. So neon does not have a high affinity for an electron, okay? So it has a low electron affinity. So, um, but let's look at the rest of this trend here. Let's kind of cross off neon now, just so that we got that out of the way. That's example one example of the exception, but that's something we already mentioned. Noble gases don't have a high electron affinity because they don't want to grab another electron. But let's look at these other atoms on the periodic table, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. We can see here that the general trend is becoming more negative values. We start with negative 122 here. Um, this is clearly an exception, right? Going to a more positive value here. So we're going to have to explain that. Um, but then we have negative 141, 141, which is more negative, negative 328, more negative. So the general trend is that it's increasing this way. But nitrogen, yet again, is an exception. So we've got to explain this. Why would nitrogen have that um, that that lower electron affinity. Well, again, we're going to look at the electron configuration and the uh, orbital, di orbital diagram. So nitrogen, uh, if it as a gas would could gain an electron to become an N minus ion. Okay, the N just nitrogen itself has um, um, an outer configuration of two s two, two p three, right half filled, which is stable okay that is stable if it gains an electron it's going to become 2s2 2p4 when it becomes that n minus ion so now we've got repulsion here right we've got repulsion between these two electrons this is not as not necessarily as 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 stable right so we would say that this is not as stable right so it, in this case the electron affinity reaction results in the nitrogen being less stable than it originally was, right? So this nitrogen really does not want to gain another electron, right? This nitrogen, well, I should point it out here. This does not want this electron, right? Because it's not going to result. It's already stable and happy the way it is, okay? So that's why the trend here is broken, okay? So hopefully you've noticed by now at least from this video and the previous video, is that when coming across potential exceptions or unusual situations, you should always look at the electron configuration. And uh, more specifically, you should look at the, um, the electron orbital diagram, right? Because if you look at the orbital diagram, you can think about, um, oops, not dig, <laughs> diagram. And you can use that to help you figure out what's going on. Uh, in terms of you know half filled orbitals, fully filled orbitals, stable, not stable, all that sort of stuff. So uh, I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.